Good morning, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, dear coffee friends. It's the first ever International Coffee Day, and it's my pleasure to explain a little bit more about what David just introduced, which we call Vision 2020. This is about a sustainable coffee sector, a thriving coffee sector, a coffee sector where farmers and their families and their workers and their communities are able to take part in the value that is being created. We heard a lot about this yesterday morning in, from the different perspectives of different companies and initiatives presenting. So the question is, what do we do about it? Do we hear that call for action? We believe that with Vision 2020, which is under a building process, we all sitting here together, and several of you have been part of creating that collective impact initiative, that we all could actually contribute to make the coffee world a better place in the next 10 years. We need more coffee, and that's the good news. That was very clear from yesterday's presentations. But how do we get there? And how do we, we collectively here in the room and beyond that, contribute to a, a thriving sector, also from the perspective of the farmers? Will the future generation be keen on being a coffee farmer or being a barista or being somewhere in the trade? I mean, there are great places in this industry. Perhaps we have a chance, actually, to get from talking to much more collective action here. Rick said yesterday we need honesty about that and we need the willingness to do that. And I truly believe that the challenges are pretty big here in the sector, and we heard, that about, we heard about that yesterday, about the productivity, about the lack of organizational degree on the coffee community on the farming side, about the volatility, about climate change. I don't want to bore you with all the challenges that we know, that we feel in every day of our work. But perhaps this Vision 2020 framework is a way to get to doing our business in a better manner. Robert, Robert you would have uh, shown you this picture here, which actually shows um, that memorable moment when the Vision 2020 MOU was signed between the ID, uh, ICO as the main intergovernmental membership organization, the 4C Association, which is a multi-stakeholder private sector membership organization, and IDH, the Sustainable Trade Initiative, which is doing a lot of activities together with public and private partners already. What do we want with Vision 2020? Haven't, have there been so many initiatives out there claiming to be new, innovative, public-private alliances? Yes, it's a public-private alliance, and we think it's something innovative about it because we put the farmer in the center of our strategic thinking. And we need all of you to do that, because it's about activation. It's nobody who is going to deliver Vision 2020 aims and principles to us, and we can just lean back and wonder if that was the right way. Vision 2020 will actually come to its real existence and is being felt more than what we can already show you a little bit later in the presentation if we all engage. And that means hard work. Yes, that means hard work at a global level, but much more importantly at a national level and at a local level in coffee producing countries. Because the dream is that we have a thriving coffee sector. Many people know how to contribute to that, but there is still so much overlap. There's still so much fragmentation in this sector. So how can we make sure that we have a better return on investment in business language. That's one of the activities that Vision 2020 set out to do. And the volunteering part of that is that the three organizations who have signed this MOU actually yeah, offer some coordinating activity there. What we need is buy-in at the national level, from the national governments, from the national institutions, from the researchers, from the private sector, from the civil society, and from the farmers, to define what is that vision going to look like for our country concretely in the next years. And then 
what are then perhaps agenda priorities that we would want to work on together and who is taking which role. That's what Vision 2020 offers. So it's a new framework, a new thinking of working together, yeah, which makes it hard because we have to get more patient in terms of listening, really listening to each other. Perhaps the first International Coffee Day is a good day to, 10 years from now, tell our children, well, actually at that moment, something happened to that sector. After all the thinking and after all the talking, we got into a more action modus. Do we want to be part of the solution or do we want to still be also part of the problems? So we are talking about long-term collective impact and uh, a group, several of you have been there, have been started to help designing that vision, which is actually what I said earlier, we built a common public-private agenda to realize collective impact, so collective action, collective impact on these large-scale challenges that have been mentioned yesterday, such as productivity in many of the countries, for the resilience and the livelihoods of coffee farming communities and actually the entire sector. You see here on that slide, and you will find more information on little flyers that are put here on the bottom of the stage, that many concrete activities are already working and being put under this broader umbrella of Vision 2020. And there is room for participation. Key principles in doing that work together is that farmer-centric approach, so putting the interests and the benefits of the coffee farmers in the center, that we identify agenda topics in a truly pre-competitive manner, that's more for the business people amongst us, so we don't compete in that form of working together, but we focus on what we can work on prior to then competing in the market. And we focus on these systemic or these holistic, yeah, quite um, big problems, complex problems. Um, the creators of the idea also felt uh, very strong about the need to have really participation of everybody who is part of the sector. We call that multi-stakeholder movement, so that it's not the government's only defining and designing, or the roasters or the industry only, but that there needs to be that dialogue and that listening, and then the collective action. Yeah, and there's commitment to transformation, so we want to get the sector to a, another stage, to a new stage. It will take time. But the vision is pretty clear out there. And we need you to refine the approaches in that. There are, as I said earlier, with the MOU partners offering to be like a coordinating committee or a secretariat, which works at a virtual level at the moment, there is some support there. So ICO bring the governments, 4 Association bring brings the private sector, multi-stakeholder membership, including farmers and including civil society. And IDH brings the public-private partnerships and the donor coordination. It's about a common agenda. So what do we want to focus on and what do we want to prioritize on at a national level, at a local level? And how that, that, does this come together at a global level? So what is more important for us in Vision 2020 is actually what is happening on the ground and the collaboration in the producing countries. We have a number of um, thematic areas, or we call that work streams, where a flavor of what Vision 2020 can actually deliver to us in this coffee sector becomes more explicit and more tangible. So I encourage everybody here to please contact us here we will give the contact details at the end of the presentation and we will also uh, give the information about the website on Vision 2020. Come and join. Let's do that together. And let's get from talking to real collaborative action. Jenny is going to guide through you through the ways to participate along thematic areas. And then we hope to be overrun here by interested people from the public and the private side. Thank you.